Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Bill Bean from the American Society of Skeletal Muscular Understanding and Neurocognitive habitu Habituation, also known as Ass Munch. I'm with you uh, this evening. As many of you have been forced into uh, familiarity or uh, at least understanding of uh, my previous descriptive work in the areas of functional movement and corrective exercise. Tonight we're here to reiterate some of those concepts and, and uh, illustrate a few new ones. There was a confusing propagation of uh, my initial work on the Starting Strength website. Uh, as many of you remember that that uh, work was in <coughs> tidily titled An Examination of the Cognitive Effect of Neuro Impairment on the Diagnosis, Treatment, Management, and Eventual Amelioration of Musculoskeletal Function Impairment in a Significant Fraction of the Human Race, an essay. It rolls right off the tongue. Tonight I'll be revisiting, I'll be revisiting some of the enormous breadth of clarified topics first offered up for direct and indirect aseptical examination of that piece, but as time marches on, so does the frontier of functional movement. <laughs> many, many opportunities exist to diagnose various maladies that elude both description and notice of others not skilled in the art of doing so or not doing so at that time. <laughs> Most of, you are, most of you are deeply familiar with the, with the uh, existing challenges that were elucidated so clearly in my previous work. Previous extrapolations on these subjects will largely or partially have to suffice for our purposes this evening as the newer non or aspecific non-normal inadequacies now predominate. Yet our persistent foe sacral trailing and its follow-on condition in extreme cases known as ventral masking warrant another nod as we detect such things in our practices and with our clients, as we work them up prior to any loading of any of these movements, uh, ventral masking presents many or few challenges to cross the patterns, <laughs> cross the patterns in question, uh, making for difficult or indeed very straightforward planning or amelioration, but in this intervention is often complicated by junk tissue. No surprises there. <laughs> When a, when a trainee experiences or presents with such a combo platter of insufficiencies, nothing short of a full screening workup and many, many weeks of interventions will likely make any difference, and neither will they. <laughs> However, in the obvious uh, in, indifference uh, to, injunct, to junk tissue uh, to such malleability uh, testing and sacral expirations continue to present special challenges, when working with our games athletes, we find extreme examples of these compensations, but the reduction in junk tissue cannot endure the obfuscations of the movement, nor can the pattern sufficiently cover them on all extreme cases. <laughs> Torque management, again, we're all familiar. In the capsule itself, neuromuscular control of the condyles without conscious input continues to be a problem for both gen pop lifters and our elite pro athletes, both of whom seem reluctant to stop and think about how their femurs are fitting into their pelvises. <laughs> However, as ever, corrective, uh, corrective exercises must first center around buy-in from the athlete who may see little value in ceasing to lift heavy in order to progress movement fluidity and stability. In the following slides, you'll see demonstrations of cutting edge correctives. <laughs> Pro progressing from less to greater challenge, and as you'll see, dedicated specialty equipment is nice, but not entirely necessary. First up, let's talk about, in the area of torque management, odd object usage. <laughs> As you can see here, this, uh, this trainee has pressed into service some routine around the house kind of items. You don't have to invest a lot of money to perform better to, to find the cutting edge abilities here. Uh, he has pressed into service a somewhat worn out broom, an old basketball, and twined it all together. And as you can see, what we're doing here is we are ameliorating all the, the, the torque management. We're giving him a, plenty of opportunities to challenge those torque modalities. 
As we progress, though, more specialized equipment will become necessary. There's going to be more opportunities to charge and use more, <laughs> use more equipments. As, as you can see here, the lifter's using a more traditional setup with just a, uh, a, an intentionally misloaded curling bar to, uh, to challenge torque management. And as you can see, he's, uh, he's dealing with it the best way he can. As, as more uh, radical interventions have become required, obviously there's yet more opportunity to introduce more equipment. And uh, into the uh, multimodal, we, uh, you see here the introduction of the TheraBand, uh, <laughs> cleverly, cleverly routed around there, presents yet another challenge to the uh, torque management. Doc, yes. Dr. B, with respect to your torque management stratagems and multimodal approaches to torque management improvement, I can see the efficacy of your correctives here but I couldn't help noticing that as the image progressed through the demonstrative and remonstrative exhortations, there was a clear coronal planar imbalance that seems likely or indeed unlikely to be caused by quad dominance. Did you guys get that? He, Coach Coacher just nailed it. There was a, there was a, decided, a decided tendency towards uh, quad dominance there. All right. Obviously, we can't let this go. <laughs> Series of correctives here. Quad dominance is uh, re-emerging as an area of profitable work as more trainees <laughs> begin to introduce barbell squats into their routines with inadequate mobility pr preparation and having little information on the dangers of squatting without first uh, uh, obtaining adequate leg raise performance, for example, and uh, hip flexor extensibility. <laughs> Any question about hip flexor importance in the squat is... is entirely misplaced. In the following movements, the trainee can be, or has been, <clears throat> asymmetrically loaded in the posterior chain to awaken the glutes and challenge his ability to move in a non-quad dominant manner. <laughs> Here you can see the trainee has been loaded with just some traditional things that are laying around. You got a motorcycle tie down there and a, and a terribly heavy kettlebell. The headwear is simply just to stave off uh, sweat running into the eyes as the corrective progresses. Okay, so you can see the, the trainee attempting to uh, deal with the, uh, with the quad dominance that has risen its ugly head. I don't know what that gibberish is in the background back there. So a little, little more advanced, you know, the foot, <laughs> foot comes up, there's a, different, there's a different motion here, as you can see. Does anything strike you, Dr. Baraki, about any of these, this, this motion here? I must say that sequence is remarkably similar to stratagems I've used in particularly recalcitrant and or disinterested patients <laughs> suffering from similar insufficiencies within the pattern. And I particularly like how your movement sequence could be repurposed for addressing VMO development <laughs> as, a counter to, as a counter to patellar tracking disorder. However, what caught my eye here was the rather obvious presence of scapular sequencing issues. Good eye. Very good eye. <laughs> All right. Coach Baraki has illuminated and elucidated with both the normity and consequence. The notability <laughs> of the problem in this sequence, scapular sequencing parlays trouble into full-blown calumny around the shoulder capsule, which can, proceed, which can proceed unchecked in many directions, causing maladies ranging from bursitis and arthritis to hammer toe and a generalized... <laughs> And a generalized weakness and cloying injury proneness we've nicknamed you mare's maleism. <laughs> Little inside baseball for the forum guys there. Scapular sequencing issues are best dealt with by challenging or not challenging the trainee with load and with increasing or de decreasing load. Multiple planes can be challenged simultaneously and across the domain uh, via use of uh, numerous modalities simultaneously or in layers as demonstrated, you know. <laughs> you see here, opportunity has presented itself to introduce yet more equipment, which is always good. 
So as, as we go along here, we're going to progress in difficulty. <laughs> on down, you can see the challenges here to, <laughs> it's a little more challenging. <laughs> As some of you might have noticed, performance of this movement degenerated somewhat as the work progressed, but uh, you can clearly see the potential for such interventions in addressing. Now, now, wait just a second. Wait just a second. Yes, sir. Dr. Dean, you know I have great respect for your work, but while the multimodal aspect of this corrective sequence is obviously salutary, uh, degenerated permutations is manifested often and or occasionally. Uh, almost always boil down to direct gluteal amnesia. How it is sacral trailing, or as I believe the issue presents in this case, inadequate rotatory stability. Rotary stability. <laughs> Raises its ugly head again. Correct, as uh, Dr. Sullivan has clearly pointed out, rotary stability. This particular shortcoming is making a very strong showing among our uh, friends in mixed martial arts. Many times a fighter will have to do some sort of uh, rolling maneuver or something uh, as, as part of the contest. And as we know, rolling involves a uh, significant turning movement. <laughs> Uh, this, is, this is obviously where rotary stability is going to come in. Uh, the key to detection in the, is the simple fact that most people have some degree of rotational inadequacy, so therefore they have it. We, we should really spend a lot of time in corrective areas like T-Rex, uh, weighted punches, one arm. One arm Swiss ball, Swiss ball presses from your back, etc. These. These modalities contravene and recede the transverse properties of rotation, which cannot be rescinded after initial introduction due to the principle of specificity, and which, uh, with delay, must be coerced. Uh, QL exten extensibility and transverse abdominus mobility issues retain fractionality without further introduction, but full amelioration is without definite endpoint. I'll give you a minute to read this. Don't, oh, don't be fooled here. This H belongs uh, over there. I don't want you to, don't get tripped up by that. This is important, all right? Everybody had a chance to read that? Coach Ripito, did you have a, did you have a question here? Uh, Mobility, stability, and strength. In that order, yes, sir. Yeah, what Absolutely. Is mobility? What what is mobility? What is mobility? Well, the, the ability to adequately move around a <laughs> a joint capsule is obviously driven by the neural patterning patterning nearly exclusively. What causes stability? The, the stabilizers. <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I understand your question. Well, so it's, it's the stabilizers, right? Yes, the stabilizers cause stability. That's which, correct, yes. Which one? The, the ones in the joint question. <laughs> okay. Well, why don't you just get these people strong and let the process of getting them strong take care of all of that shit? So you're, what you're saying is the process of getting strong fixes both mobility and stability? Yeah, yeah. Are you telling me that this movement is more powerful than this movement? <laughs> Keep in mind, this trainee is 53 years old. Are you going to try to, guys going to try to tell me that this movement is more useful to a 53-year-old than this movement? <laughs> Surely starting strength coaches are not so, as, so irresponsible as to suggest that this movement is more impactful to a 53-year-old than this movement. <laughs> 
Now, before you, before you answer and make up your mind, note that those are the handles of kettlebells right there. Okay, this, this, tra this trainee is being challenged here. But I take it you guys are still voting for the barbell squat, but let me ask you this. Are you gonna try to tell me that this activity builds strong, healthy shoulders more effective than this activity? <laughs> Are you people going to sit here and try to tell me that for a 14-year-old boy, that becoming that in six weeks, that was 100 pounds, by the way, <laughs> on the squat, is more useful than just about anything else he could be doing? That's my son. <laughs> I think he's got a better chance at being able to do that when he's 53 than he did before. <laughs> a lot of the stuff I make fun of, uh, I used to come pretty close to believing. And that funny looking blue book right there was one of the primary reasons why I don't anymore. And I have enough familiarity with it to kind of make fun of it a little bit. Folks are well-meaning, but they're not as effective as the people in this room. And I am very honored to have been invited here. Thank you. Yeah.